welcome to you all. I hope this one, yeah, this one is working if I do it like this. Uh, good afternoon to you all. A uh, warm welcome to the Keep an Eye Social Intelligent Design Awards. I'm very happy that there are still people coming in. I know that we're at the exhibition, so you all probably are running around to see what's happening at industrial design. But today we also have a very special event that is not only the exhibition of industrial design, but we also have the awards, the Keep an Eye Social Intelligent uh, Design Awards ceremony. And for that, um, I would like to go through a few slides to tell something about the history. So the Keep an Eye Foundation, which is presented here also by George Mustaz, a warm welcome to you, uh, contacted us approximately two years ago, one and a half year ago, and the Keep an Eye Foundation has a mission. A mission is keeping an eye on talented young artists to give them financial support to achieve their ideas, deepen and expand their talents, create new opportunities for them that would otherwise not be possible. And we were extremely happy when they said, like, can't we do something for the students within industrial design? So, after having some talks, uh, we decided, well over a year ago, that we want the Keep an Eye Social Intelligent Design Award competition, uh, sorry, the design competition, that explores the possibility of creating a new society. And the main core that we focused upon is on connecting people and on really looking at valuing everyone in society. So across generations, across cultures, across groups. So how can we make a social kind of society? So the things that we put on your plate is like, can you propose new ways of connecting people between and within generations, between cultures and between different groups of people? And there have been a lot of learning activities over the last semester that you've been focusing upon. There have been projects focusing on cultural interventions. There have been projects on connecting people to stay healthy. Uh, so giving all those projects, we would like, together with the Keep an Eye Foundation, give you the possibility to explore and that further and make it really happen out there. So we have this prize, which is for one, depending on maybe even two candidates, to explore their ideas further and make it real. Last year, as you might have seen, we already had another group winning this, which was in the end turned out in the company Uhu, which you might have seen at the Dutch, uh, during the Dutch Design Week at ID10, probably ID11. They were both at ID10 and ID11. And you saw that they really turned the idea that they won in ID10 move over to a company and they are really working and together with other stakeholders to see like can we get it into a sustainable company and the idea that they had at that point and the company that they have set up is on bridging the gap between generations so they have a company that supports people the greyhounds as they call it 55 plus to be connected to students within industrial design and together explore and work on societal topics. Sponsored by industry to actually make a difference out there. And they are processing this right now and it's slowly but certainly becoming into a successful initiative. So again, this year we hope that we can do something similar. That we can select some of you to make your ideas become reality. So what is the program of today? We have now approximately an hour for pitches. We have 15 projects. We we'll get all three minutes max, and we do a timer. Three minutes max to pitch their idea. Then we make a small selection. The jury makes a selection. And that selection will be visited at the exhibition this afternoon. So if you're already presented at the exhibition this morning, make sure that when you're selected, that again you are present. And then at the quarter to five, we start the award ceremony and the jury will explain and will tell who the winner will be. So who is in the jury? Let me introduce to them. We have uh, Mariella Swinkels sitting up here. Uh, Mariella is an expert in e-health, an owner of Soft Techno Service, and especially in the area of social innovation and active and healthy aging. 
She works as a policy advisor for organizations in welfare and in well care and housing and authorities on different levels. At the moment, she works at the province of uh, North Brabant in the Smart Care Project. Also for the European network, Coral, which are uh, 20 communities uh, of regions of ambient assisted living. And she's also working for the SLA, which is a cooperation of 21 municipalities in the southeast region of Eindhoven. And she very much focuses on the development of regional digital agenda. And until the region of Nobrand, she helps healthcare organizations with the development of digital services at home and in communities. So, a big applause for Maria. <laughs> then, it's also our honor to have our next, and to have me introduce our next guest, guest Peter Cox, and he is a project leader within Brainport Development. Welcome, Peter. The themes that he is heading have to do with intra and entrepreneurship, global enterpriseship weeks, organizational innovation, networking, financials, SMEs, crossovers, and he's also the director of Infinimi, if I pronounce it correctly. Nearby. <laughs> Nearby. Uh, so it means that he will not only be looking like, are your ideas innovative, or like Mayela's like, is it social kind of innovative, is it interesting, but he will also look at the entrepreneurship and the possibilities to actually get it out there and make a business out of it. So, again, a big applause for Peter. Welcome, thank you. <laughs> then, the third person is in our jury is Luya, but I'll probably announce it again, Luya. This is better. <laughs> um, Luyen is, is assistant professor in this department. Uh, she has a uh, focus on her goal is designing business processes and models that support the development of intelligent product systems and related services, but very much in a global and a dynamic environment with high uncertain markets and customer needs. So the things that she focuses on is value proposition, value chain and new product development, business creation processes. So she very much looks at are your innovative ideas, is it possible to make a transition out there together with all the stakeholders involved, and what is the value proposition that you will bring? An applause for the unit. ideas is Ambra Trotto. Uh, Ambra has a background in architecture, she studied in Florence, she also was there a research fellow. Uh, over the last years she did a PhD at our department and recently she got a PhD and is now an art, is a doctorate at uh, our uh, department. She has this focus on rise through making which is a project. project. She looks very much at the ethics of society, how can we kind of move and how can we use intelligent system products and services towards the ethics of this society? How can you actually, for instance, implement the rights to making, <coughs> implement the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in the products and systems out there? Um, she now recently is also a lecturer at our department and she will move to, in January, February, to Sweden well, she will have a very cold winter. Uh, but we hope that she will join us also in moving forward and pushing forward the societal and ethical issues. So she will very much look looks with uh, ethical, social uh, glasses to your project. A welcome to Abra. Okay, what you then see is we've have all the slides. I'm happy that we have far more audience than just the students presenting. So maybe after every slide, after every pitch, is a max three minutes pitch. So hopefully if you see your slides, immediately come up and do your pitch. Um, for the audience, through applauding, you can kind of give your comments. You can give your impression of what you've seen. So that again helps the jury. So the first one that I would like to introduce is Sipidosis. Okay, uh, this project is actually focusing on wayfinding in hospitals and so the, the Katerina Hospital here in Antwerp is uh, the client actually for this project and I'm 
Uh, if you make a prototype about uh, when people enter, the prototype or the, the site is focusing on the people. So uh, it welcomes you by, for example, turning all the different signage uh, towards you. And this idea came forward for doing research at the hospital where a lot of volunteers are helping and assisting people that enter that hospital. And they, for example, um, guide the way or they just push the wheelchair when people aren't able to walk. And that was a very interesting thought, which very interesting uh, phenomenon that I uh, discovered. And I want to use some qualities in that, in this wayfinding tool. It's, um, yeah, what, what I said, it first welcomes you, so it's, it's, it's uh, by the different signs that this turns towards you. And from that point on, it tries to guide you in the right direction. For example, it it's now detects where you're looking in the, in the total overview of index of polyclinics that are presented. And from that focus, it slowly moves itself in the body, in the body of the signage, towards the directional, to the directional signage, which can be found on the top. So now you get a better feeling that um, the system is actually helping you or assisting you, and that you can find your way yourself, and that you can build trust in the wayfinding system that is uh, in the hospital, because you have to follow it all the way, and you have to follow the route, the route number that you will get at, at the entrance, all your way through the hospital, so if you forget it, or if you do not understand the system well, you might yeah, need some help throughout um, your further journey, and to um, make people um, feel more comfortable when they enter, more at ease, because um, yeah, a lot of them are quite um, um, yeah, a bit stressed when, when coming in the hospital environment. The system should reduce that and should uh, you know, welcome them and guide them. Yeah, yeah that's actually in short what I uh, want okay. to tell. Your recommendations. Dominica Potosifora and Nick Sturkebold. So you're after that one. Okay, hello everyone. I'm uh, Patrick Leiter and I did the assignment of the module Creating a New Society. Uh, for that, I interviewed and I focused, that was also my focus group uh, for deaf people. And I'm guessing the people in the back can read what I wrote here. Um, depending on how you define deafness, deafness, there's actually a large group in the world that is unable to hear uh, something. And that is almost 7 million. Uh, the people that are able to hear uh, speeches, to understand speeches and to understand what you mean is probably around uh, 34 million in the world, so it's actually a large target group. Um, I only had a chance to interview two. Um, it was a couple, the name was uh, Jan and Tilly Blom, and they were actually both uh, deaf, and her uh, daughter, Shane Blom, acted uh, uh, for an entrepreneur for translating um, what they meant uh, what they told me is that it's really hard for them to uh, go out just in the neighborhood and to talk with uh, people they see in the supermarket. So what happens is that also for the people that are hearing, that it's very difficult to understand what they mean. So because they are deaf, they are also unable to speak. So they probably say something like brr, brr. So it's also really an yeah, inconvenience for the hearing people to understand what they mean. So the the communication results in inconvenience and frustration. So it's a not nice experience for both. So what happens is that they stay inside and the only people that they are talking with is other deaf people. So uh, for that, as a support, I designed the Icon Swipe. It's a tool, um, yeah, it's a supportive tool to turn that inconvenience that happens in conversation around. So it acts as an icebreaker. And this is a mouthful, and I'm just going to read what I wrote here. Um, the Icon Swipe is a uh, supportive tool designed as a smartphone application. So it's a smartphone application 
which enables users to intuitively combine icons to communicate context subjects, and, uh, such as directions, as a playful support to doing real life conversations. So, uh, what happens is that when they are going to communicate with someone outdoors, <coughs> is that they can use the application as an icebreaker to create moments of fun. Because what I experienced is that after some while, like half an hour when doing the interview, I I adapted, I, I get to understand how I should communicate with them, um, that I had to speak slowly, that I could use gestures, and uh, my tool for that was the interview and the camera, but in real life, we're not going to interview them, so this application also works. Yeah, as you have, okay, <laughs> a few seconds as, uh, as, as an icebreaker. Uh, in short, you can combine icons to create context. So, for example, when you swipe over a water drop to work together with a cloud, you probably mean okay. something like it's going to rain. Thank you. Okay. Next to the ball, and Dominika Potishikova, and after that one is Job Hubert. Okay, so which one is for you? <laughs> well, hi, I'm uh, Nick, and I'm with us, Dominika Potishikova. Um, we would like to connect families in the fight against colorectal cancer. Colorectal cancer is one of the highest occurrences types of cancer that we have in the Netherlands, and it has permanent implications on their diet. So what we did was uh, look at the general experience of people that are uh, uh, struck with this illness. And we found that actually maintaining this diet is very hard because suddenly your whole diet is changed. And because eating food is something that you share with your family, the whole family actually get this impact. And what we try to do is create an online recipe database that's going to be monitored by dietitians, so people can see what the dietary intake is on a daily basis. But connecting with that, we would like to have an open kitchen event. And with these events, people can actually share their own experience of the illness, the families. But they could also share their recipes and their inspirations that they get from cooking. And this is really important because those people are really uh, bound for their whole life to, towards this diet. And currently we did some desk research and there are no specific types of books that are actually launched within this area. And 12,000 families a year is, uh, per year is, uh, are actually affected by this uh, illness. So it's really important that we get an active society and connect these families uh, in a mean, meaningful way. Perfect. Thank you. So I see that Jop is already preparing, and after that one, Jochem uh, is excited <coughs> to do his pitch. So, the floor is to Jop Lewis. Uh, hello everybody, I'm Jop. Uh, this sem uh, semester I worked on the Cultural Interventions Project, in the Netherlands, as we know it at the moment, a lot of cultures are living, a lot of uh, friction occurs between these cultures. And I wanted to reduce this uh, friction. Well, I can start with uh, saying to people, well, uh, go drink a cup of tea with someone from another culture. That's not how I wanted to do it. I focused on little children. They are between 8 and 10 years. Um, they still are pretty unaware of other cultures. They uh, don't have prejudice against other cultures, so that's a Good target group. Uh, therefore, I developed the Kukuka lesson method. It's not very readable, I see. No. Um, in the <laughs> first lesson, they receive a little paper camera and they have to paint or uh, draw their own house on it. So their house represents a culture and they show it on the camera. After that, they can put uh, some stuff from their home in it, uh, like rays or um, toys just to say who they are. Um, then they can discuss that in class, well, I brought this to class because they represent the culture. And then comes the next step. Uh, they, they put in the things in the paper camera. And actually, by putting things in the camera, you <coughs> take a picture. That's what I told you. So um, then we get this camera. It's, uh, 
it's a digital camera that they can take home to take pictures uh, of their surroundings, like their house, their toys, their sleeping room, the kitchen. After that, they bring the uh, camera to school and in class they go to share pictures. They do this in a playful way by uh, making puzzles of it, a uh, memory game, or telling, well, I ate this food and this belongs to my car uh, culture just because this, this, and this. In this way, they um, get in contact with different cultures without the need to actually go there and see uh, another house. They just get a little touch of your culture. And that's it, actually. Okay. Thank you. Nick Sturkebon, Lily Chong, and Bart Walls are invited for their picture. Yeah. Okay, uh, I'm looking for Bell, M11. Uh, within my project, Beyond Your Walls, uh, I'm focusing on already existing communities in which I want to uh, enhance the social uh, activity of helping each other by sharing knowledge. Uh, to achieve this, I'm creating an, an online platform at the moment, I'm focusing on uh, industrial design uh, students. It will be a platform on which the, the students will provide all the content. And uh, through that content, they can help other students uh, studying industrial design. Uh, very quick explanation of what this might be. Um, there's a part where you can share upcoming dates, interesting uh, deadlines, events, Perhaps also things for fun. There's a part exchange where you can uh, offer and request, for example, uh, knowledge in the shape of uh, workshops. You can offer or request uh, material. There's a part where uh, you can browse through people, through the students here, through the coaches there, see the work they've been doing, get inspiration from it. When you, for example, start your project, you just look up, what did other people do? Uh, how can I learn from that? And there's a part where kind of hardcore information is just text based, questions and answers, uh, tips and tricks, how to connect your computer to the network, stuff like that. Um, All together it's meant to help others, other members of the community further within their, uh, within their activities. That's basically it. The idea, idea came from uh, a system I already developed for here, uh, which was purely the exchange part. Students can offer or request uh, workshops, all kinds of different subjects, whatever they wanted. And uh, this turned out to work way better than expected. The people were really willing, students were really willing to help other students by providing information. Uh, over 300 people registered, over 50 of their requests were made. Uh, much of them were really translated into workshops. So it showed the students here are willing uh, to help each other by sharing as long as, if, uh, as there is uh, a simple platform to do this on. Uh, <coughs> being set up universally, so it can also uh, quickly be copied and adapted to other contexts, for example a working environment or another educational model. Um, and that's it, actually. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Nick is doing a presentation yeah. here, and after that, well, uh, Terence Nelson uh, is invited to present his design. Nick? Oh, hello again. Um, this time I'm presenting Google Out. Um, this was a module where we had to represent Google and try to innovate with a blue ocean strategy and try to see how we could collaborate with the aging society. So what we designed here is a platform where uh, newly retirees can actually offer their own knowledge and their own interests uh, towards others by creating and specializing certain events within the city. And through Google Out, other people with the same interests can share this uh, event. So what we would like to do with this is help to organize voluntary activities we would like to suggest activities based on your location and <coughs> interest, also for tourists, so you really get your city uh, active again. 
um, we want to connect the elderly with the local community and we want to create business opportunities. Um, Google, of course, is really well known for, the, for their uh, analytics. And if you could actually see where the most activity is and what kind of events are happening in your city, you could uh, throw out promotions towards those events and immediately see what kind of return on investment you get from it. So instead of uh, throwing your advertisement in a huge pile of newspapers and other material, you can actually guide your advertisement to a certain group that's meaningful to your business. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Next one, Terence, Nelson, and after that one, uh, big star one. Come up, Terence. Yeah, that's the sermon. Ah, okay. Uh, it's invited to uh, uh, Robin Brand. Oh, hi. Yes, and Bob Dijkstra. Okay. Ah, it's yeah. the last name. Yes. So, uh, so you're after this one. Terence. Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, on the slide here you see a few quotes of users. Uh, for the English people, uh, that one says, for example, hey, go do some sports, you're moving very slow on my screen. The other one says, for example, um, uh, it is as it's your birthday, but otherwise I would make you go on, um, go do some exercise and home training. Um, what I did is I created a live wallpaper for your phone called Bouncer, um, by which I wanted to uh, create a very non-obtrusive and subtle way of uh, creating peer pressure uh, within a group of friends um, using abstract information about one another's activity. Um, by combining these elements, I was able to get uh, users to get a better insight in their own lifestyle and the lifestyle of those of others. Um, this information allowed users to learn more about one another, um, bringing them closer together and allowing them to feel more connected within that group. Um, sometimes in some situations uh, people took on different roles, uh, such as somebody um, coaching somebody else who was uh, trying to lose weight and this information about one another's activity also provided people a context to discuss health and to actually um, be able to uh, discuss their active lifestyle within that group and I believe that this uh, way of subtle uh, this subtle approach can actually change behavior but it just takes time thank you Um, now I take a pause for something. This is the result of a module that we did lately of uh, Miguel Bruns. And uh, yeah, play the video. <laughs> uh, we had a glance at the Chinese kitchen and their, their eating traditions. And uh, we discovered a number of typical cultural values in their eating, such as they share a lot of food together and they communicate a lot during their eating. And they offer a lot of variety in the dishes they offer. Um, we tried to apply these Chinese cultural values in the Dutch way of cooking, because we eat much more individualistic. We look at our own plates and um, we do not share as much. So what kind of design we thought could offer this Chinese social sharing in our own, uh, at our own Dutch dining table? And the answer is this. Um, <laughs> these are rounded plates. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it seems as if it's a very simple solution. 
but the social implications are actually pretty big. And we'll show you by means of a uh, set of user tests that we conducted. assistance, collaboration, and a much stronger communication during the eating. Thank you for your attention. You can now look at the prototype. So probably you'll see me around the second time. Uh, this is the first one. Um, basically, I worked on connecting people using different drivers. So one of these drivers was uh, meals. The possibility to enable people to share meals together. Um, actually, this concept has not been developed very thoroughly, but I think that the idea can still have some value. Um, so basically, uh, I created a sort of a physical uh, prototype of this platform because this platform was meant to be digital in the, in the end. This physical prototype basically was done by taking a map of Endoven and uh, uh, creating what I called meal tags, which are which you can see on uh, on your desk. And uh, these are some sort of tags that you can just pl uh, put inside the the map. And uh, uh, on the orange side, the proposer of the meal can uh, write his, uh, his uh, information, uh, date and place. Uh, and uh, if some person comes over to see his, uh, this text that actually pops out from the map, he can flip it and uh, uh, there is a green part that is reserved to the people that actually want to participate to the meal. And so, the participants can uh, write down their name and their contact information, and uh, put your mic. the organizer. Sorry. As they can't hear you. Sorry. To put your mic. Here. Oh, okay. And the organizer can uh, 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 then um, organize actually, I mean, put in practice uh, uh, the meal with this system. Of course, this is just a physical prototype of the real idea, which should be developed on a digital way, even though. Uh, I saw that there was great appreciation for making physical actually the idea of uh, placing an event in uh, time and space in, in this way. So um, one idea would be to keep the digital platform uh, as a sort of, I mean, to keep it organized, uh, but keep all the way also the, the meal tags in some way, maybe creating a kiosk inside the, the campus, for instance, because for now this is applied only to the campus community. This is for now the context that I, where I envision this context. So we could create a, a table with this map and this text and we can see what, what comes out. And that's it. Anyway, this is the least develop, developed concept I um, that I've done. So we'll uh, wait for the next one. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you can just 
Okay, my name is Jamie. I'm doing my P uh, 3.2 project, my final bachelor. And my project is about uh, social media for people with aphasia. Aphasia is a disease uh, which uh, is actually a communication disorder. People can't speak anymore or can't understand language anymore after a stroke or a brain, uh, or a brain damage. So what happens, the people, they can't speak anymore, but they do have the intelligence. There's nothing wrong with their brain, but they can't express them anymore. So what happens, at that point, they get into social um, isolation, and it happens with 90% of the people with aphasia, they do come in a social isolation. Um, my goal for this project is to get out of that social isolation, of course, and to do that, I researched, I researched all kinds of tools which you already have now. They do have computers with which people can uh, tell stories, but it's only informative. They can't share their, their emotions, they can't share their feelings, which is obviously needed to have, a, to have a decent social interaction. So I looked at making an application for these people to, um, to be able to share their experiences and their feelings more than just telling a basic story. For this, uh, I needed to be, it shouldn't be uh, stigmatizing, because then people don't want to use it anymore. They should be able to share their experience, as express their thoughts, and no written or verbal communication, obviously. So, eventually I came up with an application with which people can take pictures, but not only pictures, because the picture only tells, or also only tells information. So I made an application with which they can make a mood board from the pictures they take, so they can add more layers, and they can make really a story instead of just a single picture, and then afterwards they can share with friends. So. This is my application, I will show just quickly. It's for uh, iPad. So here you start. You start, you press new. You come in this screen, and then you can add just the first picture. Oh, I'm on the camera. So you just say, okay, I want this picture. And then you can adjust it, but you can add more pictures. Which means, for example, if you are at a party, you can normally you could only take one picture of a party and then post it on your Facebook or something. But that only shows the party. Now, with this, you can add more pictures, so also more detail. For example, you take a picture of the party, but you also take a picture of all empty bottles, and you take a picture of somebody lying on the floor. That you can find <laughs> in a mood book, and then if you post that on your Facebook, then you're not only telling the story that you are that you at a party, but you're really telling the story that this is a cool party, and the people are joining, and it's fun. So then you can really express. So with that, you can express instead of just telling the story. So when you're finished, it's very quick, it's very easy, it's very, I want to keep it very simple, so people are not, like, it shouldn't be too complicated. And so if you're done, you click OK, and then you have the option just to, to yeah. save it or directly publish it to Facebook or Twitter. Just so well, time. <laughs> It's a platform that tries to enable people to share skills by making them visible. Now, how do we do that? Basically, there is um, a website in principle where you can, uh, it, it's, you can imagine it as a sort of Facebook of skills. So it's, you have your profile, you can, uh, uh, instead of uploading photos of you lying on the ground, for instance, uh, you can uh, uh, upload photos of, uh, well, not photos, sorry. You can upload skills. You, can, you have a special editor that allows you to create skills that are re represented uh, like these sort of icons that you can see also on, uh, on the desk. Um, and you can rate your skills using a special uh, reference grid. 
Uh, once you've done that, uh, you can also search for other people's skills that are in the database. So just like Facebook, you search with people, instead of searching with people, uh, searching people, you search other people's skills. Uh, and there are also other social features uh, that are typical of social networks, like for instance, the possibility of uh, liking a skill, you know, like the infamous like button, uh, post comments on each other's skills, uh, and the send the skill sharing requests. So you can, if you find a skill that you particularly uh, need, you can send a request to the owner, let's say, of the skill, in order to uh, meet him and uh, discuss about that. Uh, and you can also um, unlock achievements, which are a popular thing in video games nowadays. Uh, achievements are some sort of rewar virtual rewards that you can unlock according to some actions you do in the virtual world. So in this case, actually, these achievements you can unlock are depend, depend on the way you uh, use the system. For instance, you might unlock an achievement when you uh, get, let's say, 10 likes to one of your skills. Or you might get an achievement when you get uh, 50 requests to one skill. But that's a pretty good achievement, I must say. Um, and it doesn't stop here. Besides the website, there is an iPhone application, well, smartphone application, not necessarily iPhone. Um, but this, this one. Um, basically, it has the same functions of the website, but the main difference is that for when you search skills, you don't search actually the database, but you search within the context. So it's like a radar, as you can see. You can adjust the radius and you can check uh, what are the skills that are in, a, in, that, in that room, in that environment, within that range. Of course, skills are, are associated with people, so when you get the results on the screen, you can then explore this, per, this person's profile and, uh, check him as his, uh, sorry, and check his skills and come in contact with him. Thank you. Present her work. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Bram Vogel. Together with my group, uh, I created a project called Tiny Chef. Um, in the world nowadays, obesity and overweight are becoming major problems. Um, recently, we've also passed a milestone in which there were more overweight people than malnutrition people in the world. Uh, instead of solving the already existing problem of having uh, overweight people, we decided to focus more on prevention. And as such, we targeted the children. Um, with our project, we tried to raise the awareness of food with the children. Um, so if the children become more aware of what they eat and how they eat, then they might lead a healthier lifestyle later on. And uh, won't eat too much and they will eat healthier. Now, our project consists of two main parts. One is an interactive cooking station. The second is an online game. Both are integrated into each other. Interactive cooking station uh, is, as it says, an interactive cooking station. It is meant for after-school child daycare. Children can learn to cook there, alone or with peers. Uh, the second part, the online part, consists of a video game. In this video game, uh, children will make a culinary journey across the world. Um, they will gather ingredients and recipes in a nice and playful manner. And uh, as such, they will also come into contact with other food cultures and they may more appreciate foreign food. Um, the ingredients and recipes that they collect in the game uh, will be used on the cooking station. They will uh, cook different meals that are uh, based from the sculpture. So if they visit Greece, they may uh, make uh, a and things like that. Um, now, when they have cooked uh, these things, uh, they can take them home and they can cook them together with their parents. Um, because parents also have a big influence on the child. Uh, by cooking together, we also hope to have a more long-lasting effect on the entire family and creating a more healthy and better lifestyle for the entire family. Um, since I've got to include visuals on this slide, I would like to invite you, feel free to come downstairs to Blue Space and take a look at our prototype. Thank you for your attention. Um, hello, um, my concept is Traces. I created it uh, during the module Creating a New Society this semester. 
Um, at the beginning of the module, we were asked to uh, take one of our own skills and uh, take a closer look at it. Uh, one of my skills is uh, singing and expressing my emotions through singing. And um, another thing that we had to do was um, interview people from different generations and see how they use their skills in connecting the different generations together. So I interviewed a family of a grandmother, a mother and a grandchild. And I found out that they use their hands to create stuff and that they do that together and that they teach each other. Um, so I created traces, which is a lamp, which is set at the grandparents' house. The idea is that uh, it's made of different segments and the grandchild can come over to the grandparents' house and uh, draw on um, a flat piece of paper. Um, then the grandparent can help the child to fold the paper into a lamp and it can be placed in the base. So every grandchild can have its own lamp at the grandparent's house. And every time they come over, they can make a new one because it's made out of paper. Um, the other thing about it is that while they're working together on it, you have different generations connected. Um, and it also stimulates the grandchildren to come over to the grandparent's house more often. Because one other thing is that the lights really slowly fade. So the grandchildren have to come back to turn on their lamp again. So they want to come over to grandparents to uh, look at the lamp. So it becomes a new point of interaction at the grandparents' house because other nieces and nephews can also um, create parts of the lamp. So you can look at what they have made as well. Um, well, uh, another thing about this is, of course, uh, it, it has no digital things in it. It's really a simple... Uh, um, concept and um, well it connects different generations it's actually all I have to say. Okay, thanks. <laughs>
Bergskutzen, it's a school for um, youngsters with autism, and uh, a workplace where they learn to the transportation from uh, school to work, because that's turned out to be a problem for people with autism. Uh, my um, concept is actually a work um, supplement, um, because they are looking for that, and they ask them for you to make a work sample. Um, they want a work sample that is useful and meaningful and makes the people with autism give them value and feeling that they are belonging to the society and value for society. My design is actually um, shown on the slide. It's a like printable necklace. Mic, uh, close. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> uh, it's a printable necklace. You can paste on your skin and then you wear it as long as you want, actually. Or and it's really changeable. In uh, the people, the office, and the people can make it whatever they want. And that's also the value of it, because they can put their own thoughts in it, their own ideas, they can make it totally their own, so they feel like they deliver something to society. And uh, also the process, they can make it totally on their own, because the design is um, uh, really good for their idea of the job carving, because it has all kinds of aspects, like the uh, uh, creating it, designing it, um, the financial aspects of it, the management, the stock management, they can all do it themselves and uh, so it becomes a product of their own. And the piece of self-esteem and um, value again actually. And the, the business plan is that they make this at the workplace, they uh, do the whole process, so the, uh, buying the material, uh, making it, designing it and then selling it to a website. And that website uh, is also made by them, so that they um, are really making it the whole thing and they get the overview of it, but also value for uh, people with autism. Um, they uh, will see their design in the world, so they um, get the feeling that they deliver something to the society and they will be proud of what they make and it motivates them to uh, make and to learn by making. That's actually the idea. Uh, Bergen Schutzer in Kempenhagen. Um, so this is a plus for us as a TV because we uh, get a sales channel for which you can rather uh, small designs are easily to make uh, on the world through them and it's a plus for them because they get the image of uh, design not like the um, uh, mental retarded shop but it's negative but they get a plus design because it's design and people want to buy it. Um, sorry. Okay. Yeah. So that's my actual mic. Okay. <laughs> so we have uh, 15 presentations. We had far more projects, but these were the guys that really uh, had the guts to actually present it up here for the jury. So one more round of applause for everyone that presented. Who will get this one? So, will you become the finalist of Keep an Eye? Or oh, will you unfortunately have to keep on dreaming and make really good projects again next year? <laughs> because there is another chance to win a Keep an Eye award. Um, I want from all the students that are participating, if you could come to me afterwards to say where your presentation is, so that when you win this and when the jury comes along, we know where to find you. And then I would like to invite everyone at a quarter to five. When the jury will come back, we all would like to invite you here for this festive ceremony to see who will win the Keep an Eye Social Intelligent Design Awards. So we have big checks up here. And we hope, of course, that one of the beautiful projects, which are all beautiful, of course, but which one will win? So I hope to see you all again at a quarter at five. Enjoy the exhibition, and students, please tell where you are. Thank you.